final domestic event of the year is the Booper Great South Run, this year boasting a record field of 25,000. Jo Pavey means business here. She's really started off and uh, establishing the tenor of the race. The rest have attempted to stay with her. Gemma Steele is there, as you can see, with the blonde hair in the second place. Edja Fini on her right to our left. Adiri behind her. So this is a gap of some significance early on, but, and particularly when you know that Jo Pavey's run this race before. In the lead, you can see Bekele there and uh, Abel Karui. When you win the World Championship Marathon twice, you then go to the Olympics, you get second place. Just look at the fellow in yellow. That looks like Makoka. And if it is Makoka, then he's class as well. Stephen Makoka of South Africa, diminutive figure, was second in this race in 2009 behind Mo Farah. But it was a really good close encounter between him and Mo. And as you can see, look at this, he's off. He's going away from here. He had a disappointing last 12K in the Olympic Marathon. But my goodness me is 46.26 is the official time in coming second to Mo uh, back in 2009. And he's gone ahead now. Well, Gemma Steele leading Edgefini on her right there. Adiri behind her on the left. And uh, pretty well everyone's there as well. Hallisey is there, so is uh, uh, Julia uh, Bleasdale. They're all there in that uh, trailing group. Joe Pavey is not the sort of athlete that goes out and does silly things. You can see them in the background, and they, actually, that looks closer than they actually are. Well, there's, uh, what, three, four, five, six, seven there. Lemoncello in uh, fifth place behind Rui Silva. Then you've got uh, Craig behind him. But uh, certainly Karui and Bekele, Bekele going through. There's the two-mile marker, as you can see, 9.12, or thereabouts. That's unofficial. And Joe Pavey now, well, this is a very lone run. That's the gap we're looking at now, and it's, well, it's big, isn't it? I mean, that's, uh, yes, all right, I'll use the word massive. That's about 300 yards, I would say, Stuart, yeah, and still yeah. you could throw a blanket over that group. You can see the blonde hair of uh, Gemma Steele at the back of that group flowing from side to side, but nobody has really got their heads down and, and laid down the chase here and indeed tried to establish themselves in second place. They've just run their slowest mile of the race, Stuart, the men. The fourth mile, 4.43. They really haven't uh, got their heads down and started racing yet. It started off so promisingly with a 4.32, but they're taking it a little bit more gingerly than I expected. I'm quite surprised because while it's cool, it's not, uh, not, there aren't the bad winds we associate with Portsmouth so often, and uh, there was an opportunity to run really quickly today. Well, I was just looking at some flags there, Stuart. They are running into a slight headwind here. Not as strong as uh, it sometimes has been, I think, but they are moving into the wind here. And Jo beginning to work hard. No doubt she's got the race won, but she just needs to keep pushing on here if she wants to run a strong time. Abel Karui once again takes the lead. And uh, Tariku Bekele in uh, second place. Makoka, Makoka looking as though he's... Look at this, he wants to have another... Come on, he says, let's push it along. Let's go for it. He, he's, he's just waving him on and says, come I on, we're not going that. fast enough. We're not going fast enough, let's go. Well, go yourself then. The women now have got two breakaways. I have to say that uh, certainly one, two and three, there are three athletes away, one particularly away, as we've seen right the way through the race in Joe Baby here. Uh, one of Britain's finest. He's so reliable uh, over the full range of distances, as we've seen. Makoka once again. Now, I've, I've, I can't wait for the finish of this race because I've, I've no idea who's going to do what at the end and who's got what left, but Makoka looks to be absolutely full of running. He looks so light on his feet. And he's followed by Karui. Then he's got uh, Bekele behind him. Lambda Sam there. Mucci's about four or five metres behind him. And then Lemoncello finding it a little bit tough to stay with this. But look, once again, he's dropped back into the field. I have no idea what's going to happen at the end of this race. This is really quite interesting. Joe Pavey, here she comes in. Personal best is 52.46. Just outside, look, just in Sowell, about 53. Very, very good run, a dominant run, superb run, just outside her personal best. But when you take the conditions into account, you take the fact that she was on her own the whole race. That is absolutely magnificent. McCulker back out in front, Lambda's in second, 
Beckley there in third in that orange vest, and uh, Miucci just losing contact, frustrating this for the Italian in the last mile or so. He's just lost contact with his trio. You just, you just see. We're, we're waiting just to see if Makoka. He's had that expression the whole race, and you, you just wonder whether all of a sudden he'll go whoosh and go away, or whether he's uh, fooling us and he, he's not as good as he looks. Well, Stuart, we know how good a kicker uh, Mo Farah is. Look at the Olympic Games when he won here three years ago. And there goes that Lambda Sem. Now, Makokas let him grab three or four metres here, and he might have lost his chance because Lambda Sem, the Spaniard, has gone. <laughs> He's grabbed five metres. Makoka in second place. Clearly, the hamstring is a problem for Beckley. He's back in third and hasn't been able to respond at all, whereas normally he'd have been very comfortable from this sort of scenario. But Makoka only lost out by a metre or so to Mo Farah three years ago. Maybe Lambdasem's gone a little bit quickly, a little too early. Into the straight now, Makoka's got it. Well, he's made it very, very hard work for himself, I have to say. He could have gone so much earlier, I think, and sealed this race up miles back down the roads of Portsmouth. But a glance over his shoulder there, and he sees that gap of 15 or 20 metres back to Lambdasem. And it is indeed the 27-year-old South African, Stephen Makoka, who comes through. His personal best, 46-26, has just clicked by. It nonetheless is going to be a long way under 47 minutes and at a tactical race on a cold day. That's a quick time for Stephen Makoka. A good win, 46-39 thereabouts for the winning time. In 2009, I was here. I was out sprinted by more, like few few meters. I mean, like the last 200 meters. So we ran like 46, 26, 46, 27. Office today, like uh, I managed to 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 to, to, to get a title because uh, last time I was very disappointed. But because today I managed to get a title, and I'm very happy. You know, the last two miles is always going to be tough. Um, along the seafront, you prepare yourself for that. But um, you know, I love this race, and the crowds are amazing. So yeah, let's go it go. So Stephen Makoka and Joe Pavey round things off domestically for the Great Run series in what was an extraordinary year for sport in the United Kingdom. Addis Ababa has provided the backdrop for the colour and spectacle of the Great Ethiopian Run for 11 years now. This festival of distance running is truly one of the sights to behold in world athletics. 3-9-0, that's Mezaret Leges, uh, the tall figure in the lead. Um, just looking across at 382, that's Geta Neja. Um, 438 on the left is Ruti Aga. Now, Aga is a talented uh, athlete, certainly a very, very good junior uh, as a, a, a competitor in the junior ranks, but certainly will come through very quickly, I would think, into the senior um, domain. This is the masses. This is the, the rest of the 36,000 assembled and held back before the, uh, the race begins in Maskell Square, Brendan Foster, Haile Gabriel Selassie, who mooted this race, uh, what, 11 years ago to the day, and it, it's become something of a, a really big, big event over the years and uh, established itself worldwide, because in amongst these thousands will be emerging the next uh, great Ethiopian runners. This is, this is running country. It's very high up, so the altitude always plays a part. And, of course, when they go down to sea level, they've always got an advantage. But that scene you have there is, uh, is, is quite remarkable. You don't see this in too many places. I'm glad I'm not having to identify the, the athlete in the green strip. I must admit, we're 36,000 of them. You can see Gadissa Berhanu there in the green top in uh, second place, I think. Oh, well, there's that Kinder. I think that's Atanau. There are two in green tops at the front of that uh, group. But uh, with the black shorts, uh, that is uh, Kinder Atanau. And uh, looking at him, he's got a pretty good pedigree as well. He was fourth in the World Junior Championships this year. He's only 19. And many of these athletes are youngsters. They really are. They're just being blooded for the first time. And this is an opportunity for them to enter. They don't have to, they don't have to qualify to enter, they can enter. And this is about running. Look at those scenes. The road absolutely chock-a-block with athletes. Wonderful scenes.
the women you can see clearly now making some headway not really much of a change uh, Legessa is there with 390 very tall figure there uh, just looking across the field Charlotte Schaffer is there as well just mentioned our oh, 439 uh, 439 is one of the athletes I expect to do pretty well in this race that's the Zagar uh, Gurma and uh, this is Gadissa Bahanu now Bahanu is really trying to get away here and is this a significant break? It's very, very early in the race. Remember, it's 10 kilometres, but the margin of advantage now is considerable. And I just wonder, there are far more experienced athletes in this race who must be wondering now, is this the emergence of a newcomer? 4-6-0. Cabeda takes over for the first time. And that's a very, very uh, interesting move indeed. She is the class act here. There's no question about that. But here we go, this is the close down now, there's no question about that. And that early break to try and get away has uh, not worked and they've slowly but surely uh, come back to him. And uh, well, uh, Bahanu may well find it difficult. It'll be interesting to see how he acts when they come up alongside, won't it? Well, the masses down below, well, they're making their way. It's not easy to make your way through the masses when there are so many as this, and there are one or two having to walk, um, but uh, personal stopwatches will be clicked. And this is an effort, certainly, as we come towards the final stages now of this uh, women's race. And look at this. It looks to me as though Ibero Cabeda has put the pedal down. She really has. And in the men's race, the leader now looks to be Bihanu Leges. And he's taken it on. And that's very good indeed for him. Asefa is in second place. Behind him is Gebrewet. And then uh, with the green shorts there, that looks to me uh, like um, uh, Antonal. Oh, and this is the final stage now of the women. And Cabeda versus Germa. Algiera has had to give way in third place. Aga in fourth place. Those four were way ahead of the rest of the field, that's for sure. But this a battle now. Can Gurma, has she got the pace to come through? She really is useful, this young woman, but uh, Cabeda's got the pedigree. The winner of the Berlin Marathon just puts down the pedal and moves away again. Look at the grimace of teeth there. Final stages then for this uh, 2012 Great Ethiopian Run for women. And this is going to be a superb victory for Eberu Cabeda. She's previously finished, as I said, in 4th and 12th, and now she is the champion. Brilliant, brilliant run. And uh, Gurma can't catch her, but what a good effort it was. Cabeda wins it. And look at that. I said there was a refreshing spray on part of the course. Well, you saw it there for a brief moment. It is warm and those green tunics will get dampened severely when they get to that stage of the race. It looks as though Leges has been dropped off the back and it's down now to Behanu Leges and Hagos Gebriwet. Gebriwet just hanging into second place now. You just sense with that little glance that he's got some more in the tank and it's going to be down to a dramatic sprint finish. Still a little way to go yet. When will the attack come? Will it come? Will he be able to make the attack, Gebriwet, uh, in second place? Leges then, Bahana Leges. By oh, and here goes the attack. But he responds. Oh, Gebri went, went for it. And then the response came from Leges. This is going to be a cracker. And once again, look at this. Flat out sprinting between the two. Leges has got it at the moment, has he? Or Gebri went coming close on him. It's going to be down to tenths of a second. But Gebri has got the better. And Leges just eases off the pedal as uh, the man from the Tigray region comes home again or comes home to win this very very good race well he was 11th in the olympic uh, 5000 meters uh, this year and he's now the champion here in addis ababa i feel like ethiopian athletes are growing and replacing highly i'm very happy to win this race the Great Ethiopian run is a big race and I advise my manager that I wanted to run here because I wanted to specifically train in order to win a 10k race. The Great Run series for 2012 has a fitting finale in the Ethiopian capital with both races decided in the final 200 metres or so. 
That's it for this year then, but we're back with you early in 2013 with the Boopa Great Edinburgh International Cross Country Event. And don't forget to keep up to date on greatrun.org. But for now, for 2012, it's goodbye. <laughs>